fish misses it, next thing you know the fish is in the net. We must pay fishing with Triple G. What do you make of um, Canelo saying it's personal by Triple G and um, Abel Sanchez saying it's just business? Well, you're supposed to say the opposite. I love you, I don't love you. I mean, it's part of it's part of our language when we don't want to agree based on mindset of positioning of well, we're going to see the opposite whether we believe that's the same thing we're thinking. It's just part of having to go through this process before Saturday night. You want to hear a lot if you blessed enough to get interviews in between, well, say after the weigh-in, you're not going to see any more until after the fight, based on asking them questions. But if you can catch them in between now and Friday, I guarantee you, you ask them round about the same question, you're going to get a different answer. Because right now, everybody's on high alert on saying the right things or saying what they feel off emotions. At the end of the day, when Abel Sanchez goes in his room and shut his hotel room, door, the Triple D do the same thing, and so do Canelo. You got a question to ask yourself. Any insecurities that's in you, you got to deal with that. And I believe Triple G has, based on asking certain things that somebody else should be worried about, as you know, I see some worried slash insecurities seeping in. That was, yeah, where do you think both fighters are mentally? Oh, you know what I'm talking fight? about. Yeah, yeah, where do you think? It's all mental right now. When you at those guys' career-wide stage, it's like you're in elementary school, then you go to next level, and then you go to the next level, and then eventually, hopefully, you graduate and you're into college. There's levels to it, like anything else. This level is you got a guy that's been smashing people justifiably, like stood in front of him. And then you got a guy that stood up in front of you. Things ain't go absolutely 100% your way. You can get so caught up in yourself, justifiably, justifiably so, that when one guy stand up and he was competitive, forget the lady judge. We know he was competitive in this fight. Whether you think he won or not, that, come on, as we've been through this before in other matches in history. But he was competitive enough, well, you know, he got my vote based on doing what he did. But when is everything in boxing? Not second. What do you... I think the insecurity coming. I got this young guy that can box my shoes off, and I know I can't compete in boxing. Triple G, no. And, 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 and it was Sanchez said something all week, and most of y'all heard it. If he stands there and fight us, are you a maniac? Do you sit there and you got a 22 pistol and a guy got a sawed-off shotgun and you're going to be close range and shoot at a shootout? You don't have a shootout with a guy with a machine gun and you got a pistol. And that said you want me to lay down too? They listen to words and they will tell you a strategy. Everyone that speaks about what they're going to do is really telling the strategy of what they're going to do. If you can take that and take the fiction out of the reality of what they're going to do, you'll look at him and say, well, he's telling the truth. That's why the fight was so difficult the first time. Because Canelo didn't stay there. Now, you're telling me to sit there in front of this guy with a sawed-off shotgun and I got a knife? No, no, no. I'm a finesse. I'm going to do the Matrix. I'm going to let him miss, and I know I'm faster, so I'm going to make him pay for it. And then I'm going to have ketchup coming down his nose. And then I'm going to spank him and make him look stupid and frustrated, and he's going to be swinging around hooks and right hands, trying to hit me up the top of the head, trying to knock my equilibrium off, and it ain't going to work. And then one round gets in the bank, the other round gets in the bank, the other round gets in the bank. Now you got a puncher who live and die by one thing. If I hit you, I'm going to nail you, but it never happens. And then you have a 12 round unanimous, no lop, no, no, no uh, controversy, lopsided decision. What happened? Oh, some reporters, he got old overnight. We seen some signs three fights ago. 
I already got the script. I already know the script. Why? Because I've been in the game 30 years as a professional. And I paid attention. I still, I stayed awake or woke all the time. So I understand the spin game. I understand the agenda game. And I understand reality. As long as I don't let my feelings and emotions get caught up between being a part of Golden Boy and not saying to the world the truth, then I got to worry about the Bernard Hopkins brand and my credibility. And I live with me to the grave, not anything else that I'm involved in. That's key in my credibility. So I'm going to say the truth, I'm going to promote, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, the ESPN came out this week as, as he was the greatest middleweight. I seen, I, I got it on my phone. Mm -hmm. they, they, do, how, two questions. How I, don't, do I, don't, I don't, first of all, I'm not being diplomatic here. I'm not saying it just to say, okay, that's a spin move, because you can do that too. Uh, I'm not the greatest middleweight, but I am the greatest of my era. I respect OGs of errors. Ray Robinson, the greatest middleweight. Marvelous Marvin Hagler, to me, is the second greatest middleweight. I'll be glad and honored to take third or fourth. Because then you got the great Carlos Monzon, who can easily be number three. But to be in the conversation in the top five of the greatest middleweights, knowing that the division is so deep, that's a win for me. Based on my style, my style of fighting and based on how I got to that level. Because to me, being in the top five and the greatest, one of the greatest respected divisions in boxing, in the middle of all weight divisions, 22, 23 weight divisions, you're in the middle. So you get speed and you get power because we're in the middle, right? In the middle of anything is sort of center of gravity, right? So we play a big part in the history of boxing just by the numbers of being in the middle. So I'm, if I'm considered five great, and they got me number one, I think that I'll take it. I'll let y'all fight and debate about it. But if they just ask me what you ask me, I'll say, I'll take five. But they, they had Triple G, I think, at number two behind you for the greatest of the new millennium. How would that fight have went in your prime, it, and does he deserve it? He is everything that they give him in this era. But look at the era. Look at the, the trail of bodies he beat and left. Do you recognize them? You recognize Jacobs. So do I give a guy the greatest of that era because you fought one guy that we know that didn't really put up a he showed courage, he showed that he's can he that, that that he can be in the ring with him, but Jacobs wasn't mature enough. You can't give a guy greatness off of no, I love me Eagles. But they're not great because they won a Super Bowl. One, the Dallas Cowboys, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the name of few more, they got three or four or five Super Bowls. Man, you talking great. Come on, man. Come on, man. I know you wanted great when you I heard you was dating a nice girl in high school. And then and, and she was beautiful, respectful, and but that don't make you a great uh, dater to be with. Right? Right? You brought it up, so I gotta I gotta let you know what I know about you. Right? But you you did good. You are right. You bounced back. Excited. That means that Earl Spence believed that Canelo is going to be Triple G, and it also means that Earl Spence has, he got it at a young age, and Earl Spence be a problem to anybody he steps in the ring with. Okay. Earl Spence to me is like a Sugar Ray Leonard in boxing of his era, but I era. Earl Spence is, 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 is packaged based on his skills, based on how he presents himself, only going to get better as long as he continues to stay focused. Anything that brings a fighter into the light when he has charisma, he has talent, and he continues to keep winning. 
to me, boxing will always be with tribe, respect, and love. Always be talked about amongst the main top sports and the most respected sport, I believe, and I'm biased, in America, in the world. Well, I will never. I always wanted to face off with opponent because I always had something to leave on his mind when he go back in his room. Uh, it was part of my psyche strategy, and also letting them know that I am in your head. I know I'm in your head. And now we're gonna fight when we're gonna fight. I mean, that's gonna happen. I mean, that's that's well, that's gonna happen. Um, but even that is a, a, a testimony of, of, of either one of those guys can say to themselves, he didn't want to face off with me, it becomes a problem. So if you think about it for a split second, it's on your mind. That guy won. That was the mental. But when it's all said and done, within a couple of days, we will see um, who can deliver. Bernard, uh,